So today is Google I.O., which is Google's developer conference, and I'm here in Mountain View to attend the conference. Um, so in AI right now, there's like an arms race of who gets the AGI first. And the two most important companies in that arms race are Google and OpenAI. Yesterday, OpenAI unveiled their GPT-4 Omni uh, model, which can reason across many different modalities. So a lot of people are looking to Google today. It was like, hey, Google, what's your move? And um, I'm here to find out. So I will be taking you guys with me uh, during my entire experience at Google I.O. So um, come with me. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, I'm recording a vlog. Is that Now we can ask Gemini to summarize all recent emails from the school. In the background, it's identifying relevant emails, even analyzing attachments like PDFs. And you get a summary of the key points and action items. So helpful. What can I add here to make this system faster? Adding the cache between the server and database could improve speed. So just wrapped up the developer keynote and a bunch of amazing announcements. It's okay, where's the sun? Cool. Um, a bunch of amazing announcements. It was pretty much like 90% AI. Everything from like um, new video models to like new um, AI assistants across um, Gemini. One of them, the one that I'm particularly excited about is the Project Astra. With like, I think it's like a multimodal AI assistant that could reason across video, images, and text, and even audio. So you can ask it things like, um, so you can show it like a, an architectural documentation and say, well, how can I make the system faster? And it can tell you that, oh, hey, to make it faster, add caching to the server, add caching to the database, add caching to the, it's like really, really amazing. And awesome things like, um, new experiences for AI across Google Workspace, which sort of like impacts our company in a little bit. But um, we're constantly thinking about like how we can adjust with the winds of AI. Like these companies, obviously Google is a trillion dollar company. So it's like you can't go go head to head um, competing with Google at their own game. So you have to like compete with them in, in a different game, a game that you're sure to win. Um, so still going to go back to the drawing board and, and see how we can like adjust our roadmap, adjust our things to see how some of the AI things that we're developing that impacts Google is, does not like impact us negatively, you know? Um, what else? What else? What else? Also, this place is like really huge. It's massive. Um, I've been to this campus a couple of times and I cannot uh, fathom how huge it is. Um, and also, it's very representative of the world. Look at what I mean. It's like around, you can see someone who's like Asian, someone who's like Native American, someone who's like all black. You can see like a bunch of um, different ethnicities and races. And it almost feels like Google's making like a, a conscious effort to include everybody. And it's it's very evident, you can see it. But we're here for tech and uh, tech we shall talk about. <laughs>
now I'm going to head out to the developer Kino, which is more of like new developer tools and not so much about um, new stuff across Google in general. It's just like stuff specifically focused for, focused for developers. So maybe it's like something that would be more useful for you guys. So come with me. So this is the customized um, electric DeLorean, um, just like the one from Back to the Future, that is part of the Gemini API challenge. So if you build an app with um, Google's Gemini model, you could have a chance to win this. Okay, so I'm here today with Uma, who also has a YouTube channel, and he does everything programming. Yeah, everything. Uh, you're going to handle in the background. So, Uma, today, um, what did you think of um, Google I.O.? Um, it was the first day, I think it was very, very, very innovative. Um, a lot of the new features that they're releasing for AI and the way they integrate into all the other products from like Google Photos, they showed that demo. I think it's really, really exciting. When they, look at, they also released um, smaller versions of their models, the yeah. ones like, you know, the Flash model and, you know, all that stuff. I'm looking forward to definitely using them and then that, using them and seeing how they could be used in like my personal project yeah. right and would you advise like new developers who are just starting to learn programming to go into ai like who, at what point in their journey do you think they should go into ai i think once you got into the point where you can build something that's functional right so then see how you could potentially add AI into that, right? Because there's no use in learning how to use this model. They don't even know how to no, build to stop without the model, right? Yeah. So once you've gotten to that base layer where you built a simple application and you know you know that, all right, this is how this big application is going to lead the hood. So building a foundation first and then going into AI. Absolutely. And, well, you don't have to learn everything, right? You don't have yeah. to lie. Right, I'm going to build the next big book. Why not? Basics, then you can start to create Stuff into it. That's amazing advice. I yeah, appreciate absolutely. you. For sure, and man. guys, um, follow Uma's channel. It's just like Uma Abu. Uma Abu on YouTube and Uma Codes everywhere. You guys had fun today? Yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of developers, Sundar, how do you see the developer role change? Well, um, I mean, the, the pace is pretty fast, uh, but you know, you're also getting new tools to go with it. The chip, where chip is the idea was it's a helpful assistant that works within your Google Docs and works within your Google Chat. And I find this is a great example of the chip's work. Okay, always got to find the sun when you film. That's the key to like getting a perfect shot. Cool. So I just got back from um, a couple of AI demos. So these were live demos of the new AI products that Google just announced today. And I still can't believe that the CEO of Google came up to that event and like he was in the same room and like taking questions from the panelists and just like talking about how he thinks about not only the demos, but how he thinks about AI as a whole. And when he came in, it was like, a celebrity walking into a concert. Like when you work in tech, you really reverence these these figures and then you're right there in the same room with them. And then you know that these are people overseeing like trillions of dollars of market cap and, and one decision of them can really take the industry in like one way or, or another. And then they're just there and they're just like humans. It really shows you that at the end of the day, like we're all like humans and the same people. It was just like a surreal experience. Anyway, in terms of like the demos in particular, well, let's talk about the event first of all. Um, these events, when you watch the keynotes, you just see what's on stage, but it's way more than that. They have like breakout sessions where they talk about like cloud, AI, mobile, web, and then they have like these mini demos that are going on all over the place and then you can get to go to the ones that interest you the most. Uh, there's so many of them going on all around. There's like office hours over there and a bunch of stuff. And so there's like the main stage. Today there, there were two keynotes and then a couple of um, a couple of breakout stages, a couple of demos going around. Um, in terms of like the general um, 
In terms of like the general wins of AI right now, Google has launched a bunch of AI features. And every time these things happen, people say, oh, company X is killing a bunch of startups because there's a bunch of startups working on video generation, a bunch of startups working on image generation. And Google has just like launched their own version of it. And hopefully it will be better. Or when they launch it, we will see what it is. But here's one thing that Sundar, who's the Google CEO, mentioned. They mentioned that they try to look at these technologies in like a horizontal manner. And there's like a lot of opportunities for startups to build something that's like very customized and like really uh, a niche verticals. Something that Google can never get as right as startups get it. And as startups, um, I work in startups as well. You try to think about like, well, how do you compete? Well, you can't compete with distribution. Google and Apple have the biggest distribution. You can't compete with them with distribution. You can't compete with them with like features. They have a bunch of engineers. They can throw a bunch of money on things and and, um, and build it. But what you can compete with them on is you can compete with them on market sentiments. You can compete with them on, let's say, customer emotion. And you can compete with them in like really specialized niches. And so as a founder, you have to think about, well, what niche can I really dominate? And um, that is one thing that I'm taking away from this event. And I hope that is one thing that you take away for your projects as well. So that's it for Google I.O. 2024. I don't think I'm gonna come here tomorrow. I have a bunch of work to do and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.